Are we on? We are. We are. Welcome back to A Bomb Adventures. Abby's. A leaf just hit me in the face. Sorry. <laughs> as soon as we started, she's like. <laughs> so, okay. we're going to be doing today. Today's Sunday. This is one of my favorite days of the week because yes. I like doing this right here. We have beautiful weather, and we've got the YouTube on. Been watching the Bearded Butchers. I really love their channel, and we're getting ready to cook a boneless leg of lamb. I'm going to be doing it rotisserie style in the Hasty Bake. We got that nice and hot, ready to go. But Abby and I wanted to do like a patio chat today. Yep. Kind of uh, catch you guys up on what we've been working on. And we have some of our Kodiak upgrades that we want to talk to you about. We're going to show them to you. So let's make some barbecue. Yes. Let's make some barbecue and talk about the big haul and the um, and our trip that's coming up, you know? So boneless leg of lamb, uh, imported Australian lamb that I bought from our local butcher at the butcher shop. Ooh. Netted. And uh, so what I did was I pre-seasoned it yesterday evening using uh, a rub that I got from the butcher shop. This is his rosemary garlic rub, all right? I did add just a little bit more salt to it because I thought it was it just needed a little bit more, but just a little bit. So we're gonna, uh, we're gonna put this guy on the rotisserie spit. Mm -hmm and do it rotisserie style. This is the first time I've done one of these like this, so I don't I don't know, we're, we're gonna be learning, right? We're learning. That's good though. You like trying- No matter what you do, it's gonna be good. Yes, but so- I wanted to try the rotisserie. Since he's been watching so much of the Bearded Butchers, he realized that there was a lot of cuts of meat that he has not yet tried, and therefore we have been on a tear trying a new thing. Exactly. Which is great. I have cooked ribeyes forever, fillets uh, for a long time, ever since Abby and I has gotten together and we do chicken, you know, but there's a lot of really good cuts of meat that I overlook because we're so used to just doing the same thing. And there's yes. nothing wrong with that. We're not talking no, bad about that, not. but I like barbecue and I love experimenting and trying and learning. That's just really what it's about is yeah. learning uh, how to cook some other cuts and enjoy. Like last night I did that hanger steak. It was a prime grade hanger steak. It was so good. I, I don't think I've do ever talked, you, you it was loved so good. that piece of meat. Here we have our prime hanger steak, well seasoned, oiled. Let's put it on the fire. Yes. The hanger steak's been resting for about 10 minutes. And it looks good. Nice crust. That's what I was shooting for, some good crust there. Oh, it smells good. Oh man, it smells so good. So the grain's kind of running that way on this side right here. So I'm just gonna, let's just cut into it this way. A few slices, look at that. Look how pretty that is, look at that. <laughs> Get it. What? What happened? Nothing. Okay. Look at that. Now let's try that one right here. Mm. How is it? Happy? 
That's delicious. Mm-hmm. Cooked perfectly the way that I wanted to cook the uh, steak to be cooked. But the flavor in it, man, that flavor is just on par. It just has a really beefy, beefy flavor. <laughs> mm. Look at that. And that's why I cut, see the greens are going that way? So you cut it this way, you get that cross grain look like that right there. Oh man. All right, dinner time. Yeah, this is this is good stuff. Here's another A-bone bite. See this juice right here? Gotta mop that up. You know how tender that looks? Yeah, it really does. Wonderful. Fiesta steak seasoning. I got that salt on the outside. You got the uh, the char grill crust. Flavor of the hasty bake cooked right into it. That is a beautiful and tasty steak right there. Prime hanger steak. So I'm gonna see if I can get the rotisserie spit through here. Trying to work it through where the bone was, see if we can kind of find a, a good happy medium. I think right about there. Looks All right. pretty good. That does. Yep. Got a fat cap on that side right there. And then we've got our. Oh, um, it smells good. That rosemary just hit my nose. Yep. Very aromatic. But I decided I'm going to make that, um, that lemon herb marinade that we've been using lately. Yes. I'm going to go make another batch of that. I'm going to baste this. Oh, it's going to be perfect. I'm going to baste it. Yes. Because he said that it's a great baste as well. I'm just going to slide these guys up on here and see if we can go ahead and get it get it stabbed with our forks. Something about like that. And then sometimes you have to kind of shift this depending on where you're at. But so I, I just did one tall. One large uh, chimney full of BNB charcoal briquettes and just kind of lined up each side of the firebox so that we're not directly up underneath the roast. And I may be playing around with that as we go. I may end up later on as it's getting a little more cooked, put some directly underneath it so that those fat drippings get down on that charcoal and it helps create its own smoke that it's uh, cooking in there. Yes, sir. But I probably will put a piece of smoke wood in there because I do want a little bit extra smokiness. I'm going to go ahead and put this temp spike in here as well so that we can monitor it all right let's go get it on the hasty bake all right you go ahead and give them a shot of the charcoal down in there and then here is our leg of lamb you got to stick it through this right side hole first then go through oh you know what i messed up Okay. I messed up. Hold on. Hold all right. On. All right. Freeze. I've got our temperature probe right there in that center hole, and I forgot you can't do that when you're using the rotisserie because that's the hole that this has to go through. So I'm just going to take this guy and we'll just move it. All right. Going through the right side hole and into the left center hole into the rotisserie motor, and then it just lays. It just lays in that little groove that they machined in that rod there. All right. See that? Yep. Right there, keeps it in the middle. Yeah. All right, we're ready to go. Let's turn on the rotisserie. There it is. Nice. Now I'm gonna start a timer here because I always like keeping up with how long our cooks go. This there is gonna go. be good. We're gonna close her up. Uh, I am gonna go find me a little piece of smoke wood and uh, throw that on there. So let me do that and we'll get that done too. I'm following him into the garage here. Because <laughs> oh, look at it, looking at my, don't show them all my mess in here. Um, this is my inventory of charcoal right here. You know people, that you barbecue every day when you have a collection. I, I don't of, know if people really appreciate this, except for the people that really love doing barbecue like yeah. I do, because I don't want to just have one bag out there ready, ready to no. go. I like to have multiple. So we've got a row of B&B briquettes. Uh, every time we go to BJ's Wholesale, they sell these in double packs. So every time we go, actually, they finally just switched to the original right here. The two 20-pound sacks for $20 at BJ's. So that's that's just a really good value. So we went ahead and got, I got, so I got four bags. Um, 
Abby ordered this for me through Walmart. They deliver these guys. This is the uh, the char logs, which works really good for a lot of long cooks. And then I got a little bit of lump right here. I buy this from our local butcher. This is Mally's brand, uh, made in Missouri, I believe. It's good stuff. And uh, got some different smoke wood out here. This is where I keep a lot of my cast iron collection and vintage cookware. I've got some vintage grills in there, vintage cast iron, all of our camp Dutch ovens, just my this collection of cookware. This is gonna have a special place to be stored at our new house. I would like to. I'd like yes. it to be where it's a little, displayed a little bit nicer, but this industrial shelving worked out pretty good. Yes. Oh, we also got the cooking kettle down there. I haven't Where did really we get that. We got to. We have to use that. Yeah, we, I found that in we, Ohio. You, you. <laughs> you the use. the cooking kettle. These are also made in Tulsa, Oklahoma, oh, and yeah, that's so I got to do a repair. Somebody cut the bottom out of it where that vent, um, that that vent bolts on. Okay. So I got to fix that, and uh, I want to make a stand for that thing. Yes. To where it's you know at comfortable level with wheels, so you can roll it around. Yes. That'll just be a fun project one day. So. Anyway, we're gonna use some pecan wood right here mm -hmm. for our leg of lamb. Find us a little chunk to use. That looks good enough right there. Uh-oh. Oh, it's rubbing your... Oh, see, I, I'm messing up left and right here. You are not messing up. I am. Can you, can we, you hold this right here? Yep. That'll be all right. There, there you go. All right, there's our piece of pecan wood we're gonna lay right there. Close her up so that they don't blaze up. There's our leg of lamb. It's fantastic. So I don't know how long it's going to take. I imagine it's going to take two or three hours maybe. Good. So. We got a NASCAR race today. Oh yeah, we're going to be watching the NASCAR yeah. race today out here on the TV. Mm -hmm. But um, we'll go ahead and start talking about some of our Kodiak upgrades. What do you think? Yes, sir. Okay. Upgrades. Okay, so he wanted me to walk you through these, and I can't because I don't know a single thing about any oh, of Oh, come them. on. <laughs> you, you know all about this stuff. Okay, okay. Here's my attempt. Are you ready? Yep. We Did we show this yet? This we is showed, our... We showed this on Instagram. Instagram, okay. So this is our battery backup from Blue Eddy. Portable power station Portable is what they call it. power station, yes. And he did a really good test for us. So he plugged in our Starlink because we think that, you know, when we're dry camping during the day, I need to be able to work and access the internet. And so this is something we've been trying to like figure out. So he bought this cute thing. So we can just uh, run the Starlink completely on this and not drain our camper battery and solar as we're on the road. So he tested it. We did uh, do the test on Instagram, so if you want to go look at the whole thing, but basically this thing ran for 12 hours. Over, over, over 12. Over 12 hours. And it, and it had 10% left when I turned it off. 10% left. I'm doing our very first test today on this portable power station that we just bought from Blue Eddy. We've got our Starlink satellite plugged into it, and I'm going to let it run all day plugged in. I want to see how long or how much usage, how many hours we can get out of this guy with just the Starlink plugged into it. So I actually uh, plugged it in about an hour and 22 minutes ago. It says it's down to 89%. All right there, you can see the wattage that's being used. This is just gonna be a nice test to see what kind of life we can get out of this in between charges. You can charge it via AC power, solar power, and also uh, a car adapter there as well. Excited to see what kind of uh, usage we're gonna get out of this. We'll leave it plugged in and we'll follow up and let you guys know how many hours we can get out of this guy right here with our Starlink hooked up. That is the AC180 model, by the way, made by Blue Eddy. So a little over 12 hours in. And we've got 10% battery left. So this thing works great and I'm excited. So it, you can also like charge your phone on the top here. Yep. And then it has like a bunch of other outlets to use to charge your stuff. So for such a small compact thing that for us to carry with us, I think this is gonna really give a peace of mind, which I'm all about that. Yep. So we'll just point out a couple of things. Please so do. you have four uh, 120 volt AC receptacles there plugging in. Um, 
You also have four USBs here. You have a USB-C and you have a DC car adapter there as well. And then you can select DC or AC. So we're using AC and if you hit the power button here, it's gonna tell you um, it's got 79% battery left and it's been plugged in for a couple of hours already. Yeah. I plugged it in earlier this morning. Yeah. And uh, just to go back to what Abby was saying with that test is that I only had I only had the Starlink plugged into this because we wanted to do like a true test to see how much power the Starlink absorbs as right. it's being um, as it's being used, and I think that that was more than what I expected to get out Agreed. of it. I was thinking you might get six, maybe Agreed. eight hours, but I seriously think that this would probably run for at least thirteen, maybe fourteen hours. Yeah. With just the Starlink. And I mean, honestly, we're never going to run the Starlink that long, no, probably no, no. in a row. No, we're but, not. But we, it gave us a good idea of what its capability is, and this it, thing. It's I pulling don't... about thirty-five to fifty watts okay. at any given time. The Starlink is. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and I've got the. Uh, that has a built-in heater for snow. I've got that disabled, so it's not pulling extra juice that we don't need. Okay. But yeah, we don't my, know if we're going to get snow. My or not, idea, do we? my idea was, we wanted to have. I wanted to go ahead and try one of these battery backups things. That uh, you know, these are all over the internet. There's a lot of companies out there. I only bought the Blue Eddy because they had this guy on sale in February, and this was six hundred and fifty dollars. Okay, and I think it was. I think it was 350 off. So that's pretty good savings over uh, regular price. So I bought that and I'm like more than happy with yes, it. So yes. I've seen other brands out there for sale and they, they all do the same thing, I'm sure. Yes. So I'm hoping that this is gonna be a good quality unit. And this is gonna allow us to, whenever we're traveling and we're out in the Southwest, we're gonna be doing a lot more dry camps or boondocking type camps this year. And I wanted to have an additional power source to rely on something like this so when we get out to those dry camps we can set up our star link on a dedicated battery that's not draining the battery from the camper itself exactly and have something that we can plug in our laptop or our iphone anything that we need to plug in basically i can even use this thing to run our uh espresso uh it, the if are, i need a latte yeah. the latte machine i yeah. forget what brand that is nespresso nespresso machine yeah. And so you could plug that thing into it and you're not draining juice off of the Kodiak battery. Yes. And it's real portable. It's got the handles built in. It's not that heavy. You know, I don't know. It weighs about 30 to 40 pounds, I guess. But it is a small and footprint for what it, what it does, I think. So it comes with the uh, AC charging cord where you plug this into a receptacle and it charged it from 10% to full within two hours. Amazing. Uh, it'll go up to 80% in 45 minutes. So, I mean, that's really saying something because yes. if it's dead and you just need some juice and you don't have a lot of time, you can juice it up and then you've got a lot of power for Agreed. hours. Agreed. Uh, but it also comes with another cord for solar panels because you can buy the solar panels and just have a complete solar setup here. And it also comes with the uh, AC, I'm sorry, the DC car adapter as well. So okay. like this guy right here, there's another cord that you can plug into the side okay. and you can charge it in your car if you want to that way. So they've made it kind of universal. So I think this is going to be excellent right here. Agreed. And anytime we're at a, uh, a there's the, there's the Harleys. Anytime we're at a camp where we've got power, we'll make sure that this thing is juiced up hundred percent. I'm just going to keep it in the truck and whenever we need it, we're going to pull it out. Yeah, and I think the real test of it is going to be on the road, and we know that. Yeah. So we'll yeah. uh, we'll be report back on what we think about it and how handy it, it but, has become. But think so. about just how useful this can be in other situations too, not just camping. What if we have a power outage? A complete, uh, from a hurricane yeah. or anything. Or, you exactly. have a power outage at home. At least you got a battery backup yeah. here that's going to last you for hours yeah. if you just want to charge your phone. You well, know? I was really nervous because there are some times where I have I have to get online yeah. and talk to my clients and send That's, things and upload projects and I was really nervous because of all the dry camping we were going to do. Yeah. So I think this That is my another mind. factor that I want people to understand is that um, some people may look at it and say why are you trying to have all this connectivity if you're trying to be away from everybody and dry camping? And, and yes, we want that, but yes. we also still want to be connected to the world. Yes. And, and part of that is, is work. Abby needs to be able to do her work, but we also want to be able to stay connected to our audiences, the people that enjoy following us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, you know, yes. our YouTube videos. 
So I've already tested this by uploading reels on Instagram. I've actually uploaded a couple videos and it's worked really well. But as I mean, long as you have a good signal, yeah. uh, clear view sky with the with the Starlink, it does excellent. And I, I can't remember what trip, I think it was the last trip. We ended up having a camp where we basically didn't have internet for like two weeks. Yeah. And so we, we got behind and yeah. you know what I mean? So it was just, it's nice to, yep. to know that we can have the access. Yeah, and, and look, we've got a hotspot. I, I pay for a hotspot with my phone from Verizon, but your hotspot is only as good as your cell signal. That's so exactly it really right. doesn't really, I mean, you have more data with a hotspot than just with your phone. But, it but if your do, phone doesn't work. If, you're, you're, if you don't yeah. have a cell signal, what good is it? Yeah. So um, we tried the Starlink when we were at Gooseneck State Park. Yes. There was yes. A, our, our neighbor that was behind us. He, they got to talking to us and he's like, yeah, I got a Starlink and we, we love it. And he goes, if you want to try it, I'll, you know, we'll give you the code and you can, uh, you can use it to, this evening. That's and we so did. Sweet. And so we were out there in Goosenecks and we hadn't had, we hadn't been on Instagram or YouTube in days. Yep. Yep. And it was like, boom, instant. It, it was so good. And so, that, I think that was what convinced you to. Yeah. Yeah. So the Starlink is uh, a system that you can pay for month to month. It's $150 a month and you can pause it at any time. Yeah. So if you know that you're just going to be using it on certain trips, you just pause your subscription. And when you're ready to use it, you need to start it back up again. And I mean, we have really good home internet, but sometimes it gets really fussy. And honestly, we've used the Starlink this, here at the house this, a couple of times. This setup right here, <laughs> I had, I didn't have it in the Blue Eddy. I had it plugged into the house. Yeah. I was trying to get the NASCAR race yeah. on the, the, this was last Sunday, and it would not work. Yeah. It was, no, I'm sorry, I was watching YouTube getting ready for the NASCAR race, and it would play five seconds and it would buffer. Play, and I'm, I was told Abby, I'm like, I can't get the internet to work. She's like, use Starlink. I'm like, oh, yeah. brilliant. I didn't even think about that. So I plugged it in, and we had internet like all day long, and it's no problem. <laughs> but let me just show you. Um, I've got it set up right here in the best position. If I pan you up, you can see that we don't have perfect uh, view of the sky, but we do right there, you see? So you have a little bit of the, uh, these are catawba trees here. These are oak trees. But as long as you have this right here, it's, it's a pretty good signal. It's not perfect, but whenever we had it set up at the beach, Port St. Joe, oh, it was 100% it was clear, clear sky yep. and it was just, it, it was lightning fast. Yeah, for our I mean, we were streaming and I oh, mean, yeah. it was, it was yep. great. We it had it great. plugged in the whole time. Uh, so anyway, that right there is gonna be really uh, interesting. It's gonna be exciting to have that guy and we're looking forward to, uh, to using that. So we got another upgrade right here. Let's talk about that. I was gonna say, I think I did pretty well on this one. I don't know a single we'll, thing we'll about get, this we'll one. Get, we're gonna get back to this, but let me show <laughs> okay, you something okay. else. So you take the camera. Okay. So another modification that I'm getting ready to do for the Kodiak is I want to be able to take this, um, Mount. I think it's the antenna. Okay, I, antenna. I, everybody yeah. wants to call it a, a satellite, but I want to take the antenna and I want to raise it up uh, above the Kodiak. Okay. To where I don't necessarily want it on the ground all the time. I want yes. it higher so that the Kodiak isn't blocking it and it's just not on the ground. So yes. I'm actually making a custom mount for this that's going to be bolted onto our Kodiak. I can't wait to see that. And the, the first thing I'm going to do, I went ahead and brought this out here. So I designed... Look at you. I designed this block right here. That's just cute, man. I'm just calling it the uh, post clamp block. There's the actual blueprints. This is completely custom that I made up myself. This is going to be machined out of a block of aluminum. I'm going to be machining this, and I will share this on A-Bomb 79 if you guys like watching some of the machining. This right here is going to bolt to the side of the trailer tray which is where the generator is mounted on the front of the Kodiak. There's yes. a plate on either side that has a, a bolt pattern and that's made to be universal so that anybody can mount that on their trailer. So I'm gonna use those empty holes to have this block right there. Yeah. It's gonna be mounted on there all the time. And then I've got an, a, a piece of aluminum, aluminum tube. It was actually goes way back and my granddad was using this for something. It was a perfect size aluminum tube and it's exactly six foot long, which is the It was the exact thing It was thing exactly that you what I needed yeah. that this post right here will slide down into. So it's it's sitting on this and you, you push this button. And it and detaches from yeah, the bottom. Yeah, let me show you. I just didn't want to disturb it. So you see that right there? Yeah. So I'm gonna have a tube machined with a slot in it so that this slides down and it clips in. All right, just like this right here. All right. Yep. And then that post, 
I will pick that straight up and it'll be about right about here. And I'll set it in this block right here. And I'm gonna, I've got it split. And it'll have two socket head bolts in there, stainless steel socket head bolts. That all you do is just tighten up those two bolts and it tightens up around the tube and locks it in place. Nice. And then so whenever we're not using it, we're breaking down, getting ready to, to, to leave, I'll be able to put this back in the box because we just store this in the Kodiak. The post will just go right inside the uh, pass-through and then the block stays mounted on the camper all the time. I'll never have to take that off. This is an exciting upgrade that we're going to be doing yes, right here. All right. Looking forward to getting to that. All right, so our next upgrade, here's here's our new lithium battery. Okay. I, ch I chose the Dakota Lithium 350 amp hour battery right there. I think this is going to give us like more than three times the power that we currently have right now with just that one battery right for there. For our solar. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's you know our battery power and okay. for our solar. Okay. So the plan is, is that we're actually taking the Kodiak down to Carpenter's Campers tomorrow and they're going to be installing the second solar panel up there. They're going to be installing a new converter. The converter is what converts your shore power from 120 volt down to 12 volt to charge the batteries. And the one that come in our Kodiak uh, is not compatible with lithium batteries. So you have to install the proper converter that automatically detects whether it's a lead acid battery or a lithium battery there. So they're going to be installing that as well. That's in a place that you know, it's a little tiny area that you got to get in there and try to hook all those wires up. And I just decided I'm going to let them and do the solar panel. They're going to install the converter and they're going to go ahead and hook up our new lithium battery there as well. So I love it. I, I'm really excited about that. But um, a friend of mine, Blake, he kind of helped me figure out how much power we would be using based off everything that we had in the camper, all of our lights, our electronics and everything and tried to help me to determine sort of an average amount of power that we would be using for the day. And uh, he was saying that it would probably be even more helpful if we had at least two solar panels up there to help keep this battery charged up. So we decided to go ahead and get a second. We have, the first one is a 200 watt solar panel and we're adding a second one. So we're gonna have a 400 watt solar charging ca uh, capacity on the Kodiak. And I'm hoping that's gonna be uh, good enough for our 315 amp hour battery right there. The other cool thing about this particular battery, this model, is that it has the heaters built inside of it. So it maintains itself if you're in extremely cold environments. That's a lot of these batteries, cool. you can't mount them outside, but this one's designed so that it maintains itself and those heaters kick on. And uh, there is a box that it's gonna be in. It's not the proper box, plastic box, because I couldn't find one to fit it properly. But what I'm going to do this summer is another modification. We're going to fabricate our own battery box, probably out of like aluminum diamond plate. It'll have a lid, just like a toolbox that you can open up. It'll be locked and this will be down inside that. But for now, temporarily, we're going to use a plastic uh, battery box. So we're really excited about that. It did come. It does come with the charger. So I was going to point that out. You have to have a, a proper lithium compa uh, compatible charger because it charges at I think it's 14.4 volts for the lithium. So this comes with it. So we've already got it topped off, juiced up. It's ready to be installed. So this big haul is going to be a big test for, yes. for our, our rig. Our new battery, we've got this backup right here. We've got our Starlink, and we're going to be testing all this out, you know? I can't and, wait. I mean, something I was going to mention, too, is that I think this is going to be more than enough for what we're going to be doing. But when we're dry camping, we're not going to be running everything in the no. camper, you know, we're not we, going to be. We've already tested the fact that we don't have to have everything going and yeah, it, it, we, whatever we get, we're, we're fine with. So we're more conservative whenever we're in those types of camps. Yes. Yes. Um, we know that we we're, we're going to be relying on this. Yeah. We have the Honda generator. So if we do need to run the generator to juice up the battery or juice this guy up or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, we can certainly turn that on and use that. A lot of the campgrounds we're going to, you can use a generator. Mm -hmm. I think it has you know, a certain amount of hours, certain amount of hours exactly. during the day that you can run it. You can't run them at night. Yeah. So we have a generator, we have a battery backup, we have a new lithium battery, we have solar. I think we're good to go. And honestly, I really like those rules. I, I think they're great. When you wake up in the morning, eight o'clock in the morning, everyone's cooking their breakfast and making their coffee. You can yep. hear the generators and that's fine. Yep. But at nighttime, it's silent yep. out there and I, Love it. Yeah, absolutely. 
But, and that's what I meant about having this guy right here. We can, we can use this so that if we do have our Starlink plugged in, it's not necessarily running juice off of our onboard battery. Exactly. This is going to be for our lights, you know, our fans, yeah. we're television. Not having, we're not going to have to choose between working and charging our phones and yeah. functioning inside and blah, blah, blah. So yeah, we, but, we'll get to do both. But I'm excited to, to see um, what this is capable Agreed. of handling for us as well. Agreed. We may be too conservative, and then there's still a you know 90% battery in that thing when we're trying to be super conservative. But that it. the only way you're going to know is to do it, and we're going to we have a lot of dry camps on this trip, yeah. so we're really going to be able to put this to the test. I'm. I think I'm they want to see you a little bit too. No, they don't. Yes, they do. Oh, stop. You want to give them a uh, a little teaser of maybe some of the things that we're going to be seeing. You want to you want to give oh, a couple uh, without. Without giving, giving it all away. away. Okay, so they already know we're going to the Southwest. Yep. Um, we can only go so long without going to the Southwest. It's just it's just in both of our hearts. We cannot help it. So we are visiting some places that we've been before. Yep. Um, and we will be meeting up with some people in one of those places. Um, my parents with their new rig. They're going to so, be in their brand new uh, RV. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they're they're going to leave around the same time we are, and uh, they have business, so they're going to go do that, and then we're going to meet them in the southwest. And so I'm I'm really excited about that. And and there's oh. a, an ambulance. Hold on. Yeah, hold on a minute. It's every day. Here he comes. Thank you for, for helping us out. Yes, thank but man, you. man, we live in a place where they come by every five minutes. Yes, yes. So, um, you know, I think it's interesting because, like, the route that you have to take to get places, no matter where you are in the country, you're going to repeat your route. Yeah. Because there's just no other way around it. And, and quite frankly, like, you can, you know, go off roads and do some of this. Like, you can do all those things, but we're going to just, we're going to book it the first couple of days so we can just get there. So uh, we're, yep. we will be visiting a place that we've been before um, for a couple of days. I, this is hard because I don't, it's, it's hard. It's, okay. I think you said it right. We, yeah. we've, we've got a few places we're going that we've been before, we but do. we've got a lot of new places that we, we haven't been we that do. we're going we, to. We do have a train ride scheduled. Um, we do have several off-roading um, things Heck scheduled. Yeah. I, I had to get it and then my parents went uh, with, with some friends before, and so now they're like, we are so on board for this off-roading. We're doing it, and so we're gonna we're gonna get th that in, and hopefully uh, do that with them. If you guys have watched and have not seen our off-roading uh, videos out in Moab, I encourage you to pull yeah. those up and watch them. They're some of my personal favorites. I know it yeah. was one of Abby's personal favorite adventures that we've done, but that was so much fun. Just trying to get you the shot. <laughs> You're getting me the shot from back there.
and it was gorgeous out there. Yes. It, if you watch the video, you can see the colors of Utah yeah. and Moab in those videos. And yeah. we had a blast and we're looking forward to getting some more of that and in. We honestly, we have probably heard more from people on our Moab videos than any of the other videos, because I think once you get there, you just can't, you can't help it. So, I mean, it's, you'll, you want to go back every year. So yep. anyway, that's, if that is not on your list, just put it on there. You're going to love it. So, but yeah, we, I think we're going to get in two new states this time. I think we're only going to get in two new ones, yep. but that's still great. And um, I'm, I'm happy with that. And I, as we plan more trips, you know, we're going to try to get all of them, all the states. We're, we're so. continuing to go to new places, That's though, exactly right. You know? So there's, I only, think... there's only 50 states. I mean, you got to visit them several <laughs> yeah. times to get yeah, yeah, yeah. a few places. Yeah, so, um, but yeah, I, I think, like and we've said before, we have a lot of um, off-grid camping, which I'm really excited about. And honestly, I, I told him before, Goosenecks, the camp at Goosenecks, which that's another video to check out if you haven't. Absolutely. It, it's I just, it's I one highly, of Abby's favorite places. It is my favorite place. It, that camp changed my opinion about camping. It changed my life actually in a lot of ways because I, it, it's just that, that the mentality, the way that I felt there is how I want to feel when I camp. And so not having any of the hookups and everything, I was so nervous. No, 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 just do it. It's it, just go do it. You're like sitting out with millions of stars with absolutely silence out is just, it's unbelievable and you have to do it. So not to knock any other kind of camping. You camp the way you want to camp, but you got to try We're, that kind. Keep this in mind too. If you go camp at Goosenecks, right next door you have Valley of the Gods that you can drive through or go camp out there for free. You sure can, yep. That's BLM land. You can go right down the street to Mexican Hat and camp down there. They mm -hmm. do charge for camping now though because of the pandemic, there's so many people went there. Yeah. Uh, another beautiful place that you can go camp. That's right by Goosenecks. Monument Valley is is like 30 minutes down the road. You can go there to Monument Valley. And then also just to the north of Goosenecks, you have the Moki Dugway that you can drive. Even if you just want to go drive up to the top and then drive back down. Oh, so cool. And then, so great. you know, 30 minutes north of that, you have um, Natural Bridges National Monument you go to. Yeah, if you're, if you're wife. There's just so many things you can see. If your wife or husband doesn't like heights, just don't tell them. <laughs> <laughs> just go just go do the Mogi Dugway and don't tell them what's happening. Yep. So it's really a cool drive. So so anyway, I I think you're going to be happy with some of the locations. I, I can't wait. I think I'm the most excited about this trip, but I think it's also We're just. We're both. We just, we've shifted again, like the way that we want to camp and we're really trying to lean into that. And, and honestly, you don't know, you don't know until you go do it. There's no possible ways to, we learn to every understand. Year. Yeah, we, I mean, we keep evolving what it yeah. is that we're doing. We're trying to um, improve our yes, camping yes. techniques. You know, we're adding some new technology to yep. our camping rig. And I think that's what you just got to do. You got to yeah. jump in there You do, and you got to start figuring it out. Yeah. And you got to figure out what works best for you or what you enjoy out of camping and I, because I mean, everybody's idea yeah. of camping is different. A hundred percent. And there is no wrong way to camp. I'm sorry, but there is not. No. If you are out there enjoying you go yourself, enjoy the, the trip you, you go want. do the trip you want. But I like the mixture. You know, he knows that I have to get in some hoity-toity things where I can do some little shopping and go to the nice fancy restaurants and and we we're putting a few of those we in. build that into our we, trip we do though. because he knows that I like it and and, and we're that's, gonna that's the end of the, towards the end of the trip we're gonna be in a really nice RV resort yes yes, yes. Uh, but we're there purposely because we want to go visit towns yes and, we and, do and, 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 and ha not have him cook every single day yeah. and and so we you know we just if we have a lot of days where we're going to be doing off grid, then we put in one that's kind of a, an RV resort or a state park that has full hookups. And, and we've really, I was windbagging that last thing. So we're, we're, you we're windbagging so much, the battery died. I know, I know. It got, it got too hot. <laughs> yeah, we had to, we had to cool it down. So we're going to try to wrap this up. We do want to show you a little bit more of the barbecue today. I'm getting ready to base that. But one of the things I wanted to point out, in addition to what we were talking about with this camp, is that. The, uh, the little Hasty Bake right here, the little 250 Pro. I am absolutely in love with this little grill and it's working beautifully. I use this for nearly all of my cooks out back now, our, our day-to-day cooks. Yeah. I like to bring a steak out here or some chicken tenders, just something and cook it really quickly. This grill has been awesome. And I decided like, I'm just gonna let it start creating its own, uh, you know, 
well used look. You color can see the you can see the color I, on it. I think it. it's really pretty. You can see the inside is getting really well seasoned. We'll yeah, have to clean some of this. I, I'd like to just point out though that we can now taste that. Yes. It, it is finally oh, yeah. to the place where it is. It's a well seasoned really grill. Good. That's an important thing that Abby just said because it's the same thing with our legacy. It's the same yes. thing. But anyway. We're going to be using this for a lot of our cooks. I am going to bring our pit barrel junior. I yes. always bring that because that is really great for those uh, those days where I want to do barbecue. Where low we're and slow stuff. Low, and, sm and, low yeah. and slow barbecue. Plus, I demand but it. <laughs> this is going to be going everywhere, and hopefully, we'll get some really cool video yeah. of our of our cooks that we're going to be doing out on the trail. Yes. All right. So. We've got our leg of lamb. I want to go ahead and give it a check. It's been on there for about an hour and 15 minutes. And I'm going to go ahead and baste it. It smells good. It's smelling really good. Yeah. So I made up this marinade earlier, but you can also use it as a baste. It's got a lot of your herbs in there, garlic, red pepper flakes, olive oil, uh, lemon? Le lemon zest, mm -hmm. and lemon juice. And this makes an excellent marinade for anything right here. But we're going to use it as a baste as well. So let's go ahead and I've got my chain mop right here. Let's check out the roast. I learned my lesson mm. yesterday not to put my face right in the grill when it's opening. That looks good. So Man, we'll that just... looks so great. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Just trying to get it evenly over the edge of the meat here. This will help give it a little lemony flavor, you know, which is actually, that's, some, that's a flavor profile that we're really starting to enjoy. Can you freeze for a second? Because I want to get this for Instagram too. It looks yep. so pretty. Yep. It definitely has a unique smell. Oh, it does. Yeah. Yeah. It's really good. That's going to be some good stuff. Excited about that. So while it's open, um, let me get by you real quick. Okay. I'm going to go ahead. I want to put a little bit of charcoal sort of like underneath it too. More, a little bit more underneath it. To see if we can get a little bit more. Crust. Uh, some of the drippings. I'd like to get a little bit of the drippings on the charcoal itself. Yeah. So we're just going to do that right there. And that is the smoke wood that's starting to burn right there. It's all right. So let's go ahead and close her up. Let it keep on cooking. This is going to be some good stuff. We got the uh, NASCAR uh, race day on. We're yes, going to be checking that out. It's uh, Las Vegas today. So we'll show you how the barbecue turns out. I think our leg of lamb is going to be getting pretty close. We've been on for two hours and 40 minutes. I had probed it, I don't know, about a half hour ago, and it was pre getting pretty close. So let's take a look. Let's give it a temp check. Man, it looks good. I'm going to go ahead and stop yes, the it does. rotisserie there. And um, let's see what we can get in there. So yeah, yeah, I think we're ready to go ahead and pull it off there. I was shooting for um, right around 140. Yep, so it looks like I actually overshot it a little bit. Well, that was so, the outside part, too. Let me try this over here on this side. 146, right about there. I think it's at a good place to go ahead and pull it, so mm -hmm. that's what I'm going to do so it doesn't continue to cook. Okay. Um, medium rare was around 135, 140, so I think we're in a good place to go ahead and pull it off there. So I'm going to do that. We're going to put it in a pan. We're just going to let it rest for a while, and uh, maybe Abby will get a video of me later slicing it up and giving it a try. Yes, I will. What do you think? All right. So our leg of lamb is ready to carve, ready for some dinner. Honestly, I don't know the best way to carve this. That's okay. I mean, I mean, you could go from the end right here and do some slices like that, but I've seen people go this way, you know, carving it. Let's try this way first. Okay. I'm try this.
looks that looks pretty good. Look at that. It does look good. That looks pretty good right there. All right. That's how I've seen others carve it as more of the horizontal method right there. Let's go ahead and try a couple bites. So obviously you have your outside, come on, got it connected there. You have all your seasoning, you know, to the outside. Let's try a bite of that. I can taste that lemon. Mm -hmm. Let's try some of this right here. Do you like the seasoning? Good it's flavor? Good. So first thing that I'm noticing, it's um, it's drier than what I'm expecting with like beef. Okay. It doesn't have as much fat content right. as the beef. Okay. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. No, no, it's just different. It's different. But the flavor itself of the lamb, so I can taste a little bit of that, that pecan wood and the uh, hasty bake. Which is all good, more mm -hmm. good. Good. I think it's delicious. It really is good. I think that's that's great right there. Time for we need to, We need to try this again. I need to practice this a little bit more because this is the first leg of lamb I've done. But, I mean, look at that big piece of protein right there. Yeah. That can feed a lot of people at one time or feed you, feed your family for several days. Yeah. So that right there is an excellent piece of protein, and I like it. It is a different flavor. Yes. It's different than what you're used to if you if you only eat chicken, beef, and pork. Yep. But it's good. Keep that in consideration. Like a lamb. I think it's great. You're going to try it again, huh? Mm -hmm. We're going to continue to work on that and see if we can make that even better. That's good stuff right there. Dinner time. Yep, let's go eat.